Steph, I won't ask you, <laughs> what did you tell your younger self because you're still young um, right now. Well. But what have, you, <laughs> what have you learned over time in terms of dealing with the pressure from every, every, every source? Yeah. What have you learned over time that works for you as a person? Um, I've learned that growth is a process and it happens every single day, every single moment. Every lesson, every life is a teaching, it's, it's a teacher. So um, for me, dealing with the pressure, it's all about, because my, my mom usually tells me, you can't really control the things that happen outside you, but you can control how you react to them and what happens inside you. So um, for me, I usually try to work on myself every day so that I can be able to handle situations as they come. I do a degree in counseling and psychology, which has helped me tremendously um, in dealing with people, especially in the industry that I'm in. And yeah, um, I just feel like um, it's just the process that you it's just working on yourself, the, the process of working on yourself, just knowing who you are, knowing what you stand for, especially knowing what you stand for, your values, you can never be shaken. It might come to a point that you can be tempted, but once you're strong enough and you've done that self-development, it's yeah. gonna help you a lot. Okay, yeah. Davin, I'm just gonna throw this pan in the wax here. We keep talking about the girls and there's been a lot of conversation about girls versus boys. In fact, right now it's a rife conversation everywhere that the girl child is being a bit, a bit being empowered at the cost of the boy child. Where do we draw the line? And I know you're biased on this, but let's just do, let's, let's just I mean, do it. <laughs> I do. I do have the bits, uh, but um, well, you know what's so funny, and and it's it's such a it's such a feminist argument. But but being a feminist doesn't mean um, all, all everyone should be feminist, actually. But the thing is, is that just because there is content out there for the girl child, boy writers, where are you? That, that doesn't mean that just because I'm writing something for females, for young girls, you shouldn't be writing something for young boys. It's not an and or, mm. it's a together. It's a humanity thing as opposed to a gender thing. Yeah. Come, bring, let's discuss. It's not, it's, it's, it's not, there's not only one spotlight. There's not only one TV station. There's not only one, you know, morning show. Yeah. That's, it's, it's not a, it's not a competition. And I think that's the problem with so much of humanity. Yeah. Everything is a competition these days. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, no, no, there's space for everyone. And everyone should be at the table. Yeah. But at the same time, if you look at gender-based violence, which is also rife, also a conversation that seems to be happening, yeah. who's getting beaten, abused, murdered? It's not actually the boy child. It's the girl child, and that's why we're here discussing these things. Statistically speaking, it's more the girl child, but even the yeah. boy child goes through Absolutely. the same drama. Like, come, let's write, let's discuss, yeah. let's, you know. How are you dealing with that part, especially of the relationships between the girls and the boys in the series? What is the general underlying conversation? I know you mentioned that you're not dictating any terms to anyone. It's an open, free conversation. How are they dealing with that particular aspect? Well, it was very important with Sky Girls, uh, the umbrella organization, and, and actually I feel so, so passionately about this for any 23-year-old or under, do not, do not date, commit, I don't know what, 23 and under, please just keep your options open, <laughs> focus on yourself. Oh, no, you did not go there. <laughs> you said, did not go there. Went there. <laughs> okay, your take it back, right? Your first girlfriend. Imagine if you were still with that person. And if you are, let's discuss that off air. But I, <laughs> say, I feel like up to 23, and dare I say a little bit later, the focus should be on you. You are molding yourself. That's an everyday thing. You're molding yourself. You're growing yourself. You water, you water yourself first. You cannot pour from an empty cup, right? True. So it was absolutely, absolutely important that Sky Girls and Pa is not about these girls and their relationship in, according, in, in, in relation to the boys. Yeah. These are, these are young women. These are people. These are entities unto themselves, not in relation to, oh my gosh, does he like me? Is he looking at me? Oh my God. <laughs> and as charming as you are in your waistcoat, and we are all <laughs> individuals. And yet it actually happens, yeah? Because that's what they're thinking about when they're on their own. Well, biologically, right? Yeah. Biologically, we looked at it and we said, okay, well, there are certain hormones in adolescence, but there is also other things that are going on. So yes, there are some gorgeous, lovely, talented boys in this series. But at the same time, yeah. some of them 
are peddling some bad, bad things, and our girls, you know, they come into their own. They say to themselves, I'm a Sky Girl. Yeah. I can make these decisions for my... So. so your cutoff point is, if 23 is too young, what is your cutoff point? Right? <laughs> <laughs> when do we start dating, Davina? Start dating? It depends if that's you asking <laughs> on a date. That we will discuss later. You know, you're on live TV. <laughs> oh my God. Is this live? <laughs> yes, it is. Let's talk about something else. Steph, and we're talking about your generation and you're right here. Mm. What are your thoughts on what we just talked about in terms of your relation b between yourselves and the boys? Because the difference between Davina's age said and myself mm -hmm. is that there were almost set criteria of dealing with this yeah for you it's an open playing field hmm. um i like what davina said uh in terms of like the um, girls have a lot more going on than boys like we have hormones especially that key moment in their lives adolescence the hormones are just everywhere so you can imagine like power was just meant that to was meant to guide them to show them how to make to navigate like it's like a manual for them you know just to show them how they how to live life how to make decisions and how to control their feelings it's not a must to do some things you know so it's very very key especially to focus on the females and uh, I don't say unfortunately but yes because um, at that point of their life it's very critical it really molds them um, it really molds them. For example, early pregnancies happen during the, uh, that age. Like it's very, it's it's a very scary age to be in, and they need someone to guide them. Yeah. Whatever it may be, social media, whatever, just to guide them to to show them that it's normal, it happens, but this is how you can go about it. Um, imagine there's a lot of information um, out on social media about how to live, how to dress, how to do whatever, and. I don't know. I think I wouldn't want to compare the girl child and the boy child because whatever we go through might somehow be similar but it's also completely different so as she said i think men understand um the the boys more and better they understand what they go they went through they go through so it's more of like what are you guys doing about it you yeah. know because we are i think we are trying to do the best that we can to navigate our own species so <laughs> yeah yeah okay so talk to me about the characters then you mentioned the characters in power who is your best character and what lessons do people learn from that character and who is your worst character and what are the lessons that people learn because uh, even, you can always be used as a bad example so there's always a lesson you learn from the worst characters hmm. i i honestly let's start with the best the best yeah not to be biased at all. It's just the character, Yourself. the script. <laughs> Not myself, but Lydia. <laughs> Lydia is actually, she represents, I feel like she represents a lot of the milestones that people, young girls go through. Um, she, she is just, she's a free spirit. She can go, she can try things. She can do, she can meet new people. She's open to learning. So I think that, that represents a lot of girls, especially uh, who are getting into the adolescent stage. So for Lydia, she, she is just, she's so neutral. Yeah. Like she wants, she can try something bad and realize, oh my God, this is not for me. And then she can try something good and be like, yeah, I really like this. And that's gonna be part of her. Uh, worst character. <laughs> Worst character, um, I'd say Mato. Okay. Oh, Mato, Mato, Mato. <laughs> so far, we have not seen Mato. <laughs> but, yo, um, just keep, just keep, I don't know. You don't he, want to let the cat out of the bag. Yeah, I don't, want to, I don't want to give spoilers. But, <laughs> but what lessons would people learn from Mato, even if you don't go into exactly what happens? Um, he represents what's not to be. Yeah. He represents the... Oh, what we all should not be. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what should not be. And he represents the temptations that we go through. He represents the struggles and um, the negative things that we go through in yeah. our teenage lives. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know how... So it's his reaction to these temptations that you're not okay with. Because the temptations we will face. It's yeah. a standard. It's uh -huh. how he reacts to them. That's where your concern is, right? Hmm. It's not how he reacts to them. It's how it's he the one who's making represents the them. <laughs> yeah. It's the embodiment yeah. of the Have you just watched it at 6 Yeah. Years. You know, but you see, that's Stop the thing. I mean, Stop <laughs> taking me. I'm just like, <laughs> I can't give information. I, I can see how you're struggling to <laughs> let the cut out of the bag with the spoilers. But Davina, let's come to you now. So who's your best character and what lessons do you think people can learn from them? And who's your worst? Ooh. <laughs> Oh. And the lessons that people can learn oh from that as well. Oh my goodness. 
the way I, no, I love the three girls. Yeah. I love the three girls because, as I said, they they represent uh, different parts of myself and the the girls I went to school with. Yeah. I just I I, I feel like they're all on a spectrum of. Um, you know, uh, me on a bad day, or anyone on a bad day, essentially. Yeah. And um, no, I can't. I can't. No, I can't say who 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 not to listen to. The thing is, is that I'm hoping yeah. Pa does give that that breadth of personalities that you can see yourself in actually every character, even the bad ones. Because let's face it, none of us are good all the time. Yeah. But it is Mato was there to be that tool of. Of yes, he happens to be a, a, a male. Yeah. But um, there are also girls peddling bad choices, and it is just about Lydia, kind of taking us through that that thought process and that that action of deciding what is myself, what yeah. is good for me, what is not good for me, what's my thing. Yeah. And this is where the rubber meets the road, really. I mean, how do you define who you are in a, in a world that is changing at a, an alarming rate? So is it that you decide that as Davina, these are the things I can do and these are the things I can't do. But then when the circumstance changes, what happens? But I think that that's the thing, right? I think that that's, that's the, the, the blessing and the curse of being alive is that it changes all the time. Yeah. And we are all fluid, right? So actually the kernel is, the kernel of the, the, the whole idea is that you should always be asking those questions and you should always have a framework or a list of questions to ask yourself, right? Does it feel good? Does it not feel good? Do I feel safe? Do I not feel safe? Do I um, feel uh, honest to myself or do I, do I not feel honest? And that's the thing. There's nothing like being alive is cut and dry, black or white. Everything, everything is changing all the time, but so are you. Okay. Stephanie, is this a societal disintegration or do we need a bit of more parental guidance? And this you don't have to talk about yourself. I know you're talking about other friends as well. Mm -hmm. is, that, is, is that what's lacking, parental guidance from the people? Or is it just a general societal degradation of uh, ideologies? Because mm -hmm. quite a number of people are liberal now. Nobody, there's no rules. It's more, it's, nothing is black on, and white anymore. Yeah. Everything is just gray. Um... I wouldn't say lack of parental guidance is um, lacking, but, uh, quote unquote. I'd put it in a way. That, I'd put it um, in a way that suggests that it's just lack of information on the parent side on how to deal with teenagers, on how to deal with children. Some got them really early. Some it, there's literally no manual to how on how to raise a child at all. So it's just creating. I feel like there sh there should be that relationship with the, uh, with the kids, a very intentional relationship, like how was your day, how, not just letting it pass by, because trust me, kids will learn, in a will learn in a different way. They'll find social media, their friends who are also raised in a different background, who have their own ideas, their own uh, mindsets that are gonna influence them. So it's just having that personal relationship with your kids, knowing, um, knowing who they are, understanding their personality, how to deal with their personality. So I think, um, for example, um, psychologists, therapists, um, they should uh, make it more intentional to teach parents how to deal with different personalities, not children, just different personalities, because your child will end up growing up, finding out who they are, and you need to know how to deal with them at every single stage and also maintain that relationship, not fighting, not just being able to let them explore themselves, but as, as well as being let, letting them do it while they're in your space and not just in the masses of the world. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I am impressed that you're talking about par parents dealing with personalities because when we were growing up, you're simply beaten to a pulp. There's no issue about you being having a personality, this personality, that. Mm -hmm. When it comes to punishment, what do you think should be done how and how should it manifest that's the thing again uh, knowing your child knowing what makes them happy taking it away from them as a consequence um of what they've done wrong it's more of like let's say for example i give you the freedom to have your phone um i'll, ha I'll have to take it for a week until you understand why you, what you did wrong and not um and the lesson why why I, I i'm saying that it's wrong to do that that's why i'm punishing you i'm not punishing you because um i just feel like or but i don't know i feel like but does it even work yeah 
honestly it does i'd feel i'd feel more appreciated more hard if i had that conversation with my parents if um they would as much as yes we used to be caned <laughs> i don't know that there's um there's a mentality that we had while growing up that i've had a lot of people talk about um that once you've been I don't know, you've been limited and restricted in your home. You just want, as soon as you live like this, or as yeah. soon as you get as, a, a little bit of freedom, you explode. Yeah. And that's because you never had that freedom to just be yourself and be who you are in your, in your household, in your home, and with your parents. Yeah. So, yeah. But therein lies the other concern about rebellion, because people like to do things that they've been told not to do. Yeah. So how do you deal with that in terms of being a bit more strict? You realize I'm pulling you towards our side of being panicked. I understand. Yes? I mean, no, I understand. I'd like to hear your there's perspective a balance because between, it's a different generation. Yeah, there's a balance between the two. And we all know times are changing, things are changing. These days, I don't think many children are being caned as much as they should be. Because, <laughs> oh. yeah, honestly, no, no, no. I feel like, um, or rather the punishment, uh, we're letting our there's a difference between like, giving them freedom and t letting them just do whatever for the sake, even if it might be negative. Oh, it's like, oh, that's my child. That's how he is. Yeah. No, that's not how it's supposed to be. It's this is wrong. This is right. Yeah. Follow through. Exactly. David and I see that. David is about to fight me. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I want to fight with this one. Like, I want to fight with you. You cannot honestly think, right? You cannot honestly be. Um, be on board with beatings. You can't. You cannot. In 2022, are we still having this discussion? It's, it's, it's been proven that as soon as you inflict physical harm on someone, right, it's, it, it locks them up mentally, it breaks them, and it closes them down. Physical punishment is absolutely not the way forward. There is, there is so much. There's overwhelming evidence on that. But what is the way forward? The way forward, why are we all discussing? You are in TV, why are we all dis <laughs> so nervous to have a conversation? These aren't aliens, they came out of you, you made them, yeah. right? Just converse, just converse, communicate, yeah. okay? Don't have just two people at the table, have a couple of people, but there's nothing like hitting or beating, please, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 let's go ahead. Let's, let's talk ahead. about that in terms of parental guidance. That's what you're talking about, right? So how much of it should come through and how should it manifest? That's what we're talking about. No, it's, it's, it's conversations. Yeah. yeah why, are we, have, why are we afraid to talk to people? Yeah, have that personal relationship. But you talked relationship. about personalities. What about There's what no happens? There's no personality that can't discuss. There's some who don't want to listen. That's fine. That's how you know how to deal with them. Then find ways to make them listen, but it, it, it's, not, it's not corporal punishment, yeah. right? And you know, you know, we are backpedaling this on the issue of, do you think the issue in the society today is lack of parental guidance? Mm. That's, or is it just a generational difference? Because we're talking about things that are no longer white or black. Yeah. They are more gray. Yeah. So is it an, an issue of parental guidance or is it just a changing society? That's, where, that's how we got into this entire conversation of discipline and discipline, beatings, <laughs> no beating. Yeah. <laughs> So is that, is that <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I, I could tell the, so the, thing the temperatures is, right? are rising. I'm like, yo, <laughs> it's about parental guidance. Are you, are you a parent? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, neither am I. And I do find it extremely scary. Yeah. But I think we've all, we, we are all children of someone to someone. Brought up differently. We are. We are all brought up differently. Because I'm in the generation of the beatings. But, yeah, no, that's <laughs> and true. And I think I turned out all right. Uh, well, <laughs> I think okay. I think <laughs> no, um, but you know, the thing is, is that it, trauma is a thing. I think we can only look at facts, figures, studies. Yeah. Right? We can only look at that. And, and that's even discussing uh, personalities. We look at personality tests. Yeah. We look at scores. We look at evidence. And looking at evidence, like, Physical harm is, is just, it's never the way, yeah. is it really? No, it's Even not. if you're related or not related. It's not, but you're talking about parental guidance, how it manifests. Yes, yeah. but, but that's the thing, discuss. So we've agreed Whether physical beatings is not it, but it's then not. So then, what do? I mean, look, we, we thankfully live in a world where there are resources, online, free, counseling, therapists, PAR series, you know, it, the, the resources are there, so we should use them. Yeah. All right, Stephanie, so at the end of this series, mm -hmm. what do you wish will be achieved as a lead actress? Um, what kind of impact would you want to see? In terms of my art, my craft, or is in terms of like the All whole- All round, the whole series, what kind of impact would you want? When a young girl walks up to you, what are you hoping they tell you? That this is what I learned, mm -hmm. and what is that thing that you want them to learn? Um, 
I want them to come up to me and tell and tell me that I, I relate with you and I'd want them to understand that it's normal like going through all these challenges it's normal it doesn't make you a bad person if you make the wrong choice it just teaches you to be better you know so at the end of the series I'd also want them to see to be able to feel inspired enough to chase after their dreams um, I do a lot of Q&A's on my Instagram and I usually a lot a lot of these come up how do I get into it how do I change how do I improve myself how do I build my social media how do I become more like you um yeah i feel like it's just just under, making them understand that it's normal to go through all this and it doesn't really make you a bad person it makes you human and it makes you who you are it shapes you into who you are the decisions you make yeah. shapes you into who you are yeah so yeah but how do you discover who you want to be because you see there's a question here from governor the dreamer it's very it's a comment but it's related to what you're saying mm -hmm. he says always be yourself express yourself have faith in yourself do not go out and look for a successful personality mm -hmm. and duplicate it because mm -hmm. you see the thing is even the people are speaking to you they always there's some of them you mentioned i want to be like you yes so how do you discover what you're really good at because i can't be stephanie I mean, exactly. I'm, I'm not a good ac actor like Davina. <laughs> um, it's first of all, I usually address it as um, you can never be a duplicate of someone else. You just have to be your own version. There's not. Th there's only one you in the world. There's only one person who's gone through the, the whatever you've gone through, and that's you. You know. Um, when it comes to knowing who you are and making making your, yourself who you are yeah. i feel like it's a day-to-day -day challenge you can never be fully aware of yeah this is me this is the bible this if you want to know who i am this is what you read this it's more of like every day it's a growth every day it's a new challenge every day you grow into a different phase of your life you meet new people so it's 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 just growth and understanding that at every stage this is what i can accept this is what i can't accept and that shapes who you are. It, it seems like just one statement and one um, like noun of, like of who you are, but it's not. It's, 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 it's all the things you've gone changing. through. Yeah. How, did you always know you wanted to be an actress? No, actually, I stumbled into it um, <laughs> very accidentally. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what happened is I used to act a lot in primary, but it was not... Uh, I never really thought of it as a career. It was more of like for fun. We were going to find keys, you know, meet new people, get out of school. Um, yeah, um, but when I finished high school, I really wanted to just start, I wanted to start hustling and just getting my own money and etc, etc. So a friend of mine who uh, I, we used to talk on Instagram a lot, and he's an actor. He was like, oh, by the way, you told me you want a, you're looking for like a hustle. There's a, there's a role, there's an extra role on this set. Do you feel like you want to show up? Yeah. I was like, yeah, cool, why not? So you took a risk. Yeah, I was like, you know, it's fun. I mean, this is a new world, why not? Um, so when I, my mom actually took me to the set. And then when, she, when we were leaving, I didn't get to shoot that day. When we were leaving, she was like, I don't like that crowd. I don't like the people there. And I tried to explain to her, it's not the people, like every industry, be it um, medicine, be it law, every industry has catchy people. It's how you respond to them. So I tried to explain that to her. She didn't want to listen. And the next week I got a call again. I was like, okay, so we're shooting this time. And um, yeah, yo, we found your co uh, we found your co-actor who was supposed to be on, with you that on set, but he wasn't. Yeah. So he came on that day. And that day is when um, I met the producer. I did my thing. I met the producer. That, that's the day he was there. <laughs> Imagine. So um, he called me aside. He was like, hi, um, have you ac ever acted before? I'm like, mm, yeah, drama festivals, trying to like show you I have experience, but yeah. mm, no. Um, then he was like, have you ever thought of it as a career? I was like, um, not really, but it's something I, I, I've... Like, I don't mind it. It's, it looks fun. It looks very interesting. It looks, because I used to love waking up every morning, posting, I'm on set. At, I'm leaving for set at four in the morning or five in the morning. And guys are like, oh my gosh, you're so hard working. I love that. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. It, it, that's how I got into the industry. Because he, after that, we, he got me to different projects. We did a pilot series together. Um, and that's what I decided. I, I found my love for film and acting. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's a funny story how I got into this industry. <laughs> Davina, how did you end up where you are? Did you always know this is what you wanted to do? Or you fumbled upon it? Um, I'm just really bad at maths. 
So I was like, let me go into the arts. <laughs> um, uh, no, no, I mean, it's the same thing. I think school and upbringing molds you. I did a lot of theatre and things like that. And I think, like with so many things, it's, it's, for me, it's, I don't know what I am. I don't know, I, I only know what I'm not, right? So it's a process of elimination. Yeah. So this is where I feel safe, I feel calm, and I feel strongest, is in the arts. Um, and I think that that's the same with everyone. I think, I think that's the process of getting to know yourself. It's just finding what you aren't and what you don't like. Okay. Yeah. There's, a, there's a comment here from Governor the Dream again. He says all personality traits have their good side and their bad side. But for a long time, we've seen introversion only through its negative side mm. and extroversion mostly through its positive side. So are we the ones who then create these connotations that then in the ripple effect of it all give people undue pressure? If you're the quiet type, then either people think you're a geek or you're just weird. If you're the loud type, then people say this is the right personality. And it's super interesting, actually, because uh, one of the characters in Pa, she, um, she, Nema, she is the embodiment of a sky girl. And she is studious, she's quiet, she's calm, she's confident, she's introspective, an introvert. Yeah. And absolutely, like, why is that M media, a us, problem. we've shaped this kind of like, yeah. we're amazing because we're loud and loud. And it's like, no, you are who you are. Everyone should be at the table and we are just human, yeah. no matter what. Okay, Stefan, what do you think? Is it, is it the society that is putting undue pressure on people? And you're the one who also mentioned personality and parents yeah. who learn the personality of their children. Mm -hmm. Is it that we have this idea of what a good personality is? Therefore, anything that falls short of that is deemed as a bad personality, and yet it's not necessarily the truth. Yes, um, I feel like it's, yes, it is the, so the society that um, has push that narrative that um, any fun extroverted person is like the best personality to be and introverted is like boring and chill and just whatever yeah. no and I don't know it's that's what I was, I was saying like we need a lot of um, we need to educate ourselves a lot on the different personalities, knowing how, how to work on your strengths and make them stronger and how to work on your weaknesses to make them better, you know? So it's more of like just trying to understand each personality, having like workshops, talking about personalities, talking about how to deal with children with such personalities, you know? So it's more of like just, it's, it's just ignorance, basically, of having just the same um, mindset as everyone else without really knowing and understanding each personality as it comes. Yeah. Yeah. Davina, we had, we had talked about this uh, slightly earlier on, but Injina Lazaro Kanyamboko on Twitter is saying, how do you deal with the negative thinkers whose aim is only to destroy someone's reputation through throwing insults online or cyberbullying? Oh, my gosh. Let me tell you, I have so much respect for... for, for girls like you, for people who actually can go online and post and things like that. It's, it's, it's so intense out there. I think, I think the block button is amazing and I've recently found it, yeah. but I also can't live out there. And I know that for my industry, um, as a radio host, as a writer, as a producer, it's absolutely a way to get work, but I, I actually can't do it. For my mental health, I, I actually can't do it. Um, I also find it it, it's just too much. And that's me knowing me, right? So Tandem yeah. found me not through social media, not online. I, I just, I, I can't do it. So it's, it is, it's about what works for you. Yeah. And, and if being online and, and, and being hated online doesn't work for you, bounce. So for you, the block button works fantastic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Steph. <laughs> Um, Cyberbullying. And I know you mentioned that you just delete. But is it yeah, I delete and block after. Comment, but also it's hard not to read it because it's right there. You will, that's the thing. If yeah. you know you that you always have to know yourself. That's the thing. You need to know um, that you have, not, you have not done anything wrong to provoke that feeling. You have not done anything wrong to make that person say whatever they said. So it's not your fault. It's just this person either had a bad day or is... Pro, uh, uh, projecting or their fears or their insecurities onto you because they see you doing well and they hate it. They hate that about you. So it's 
if you know in your heart that you haven't done anything wrong, don't let it get to you. Yeah. It's it's more of like that problem. If you have a problem with me, because uh, trust me, the people will be there. The negative people will always be there, whatever industry you work in. But knowing that you you you've done your part, you're good to people, you're kind to people, you've not tried, you've not done anything to um, to spark that um, negative feedback to you, then it shouldn't even bother you just block delete and block yeah yeah we were talking about parental guidance earlier on mm -hmm. and now the other way to look at it is the religious teams the clergy mm -hmm. have they also failed the society in one way or another <sighs> i feel like and this is this is rather subjective so yeah it's, yeah it's your own view as a young person growing up that's what yes. we're talking about okay um for me personally i feel like um Religion these days has been more institutionalized than personalized because um, times are changing and people have different mindsets and people will question you a lot. So if something really doesn't resonate with them at this time, it's going to be more of like, I don't know, I like, I don't want to be part of that. I feel judged. I feel... I feel not heard in this place. And that's why pe most youths, mo most teenagers either run away from church or they just don't want to be associated with church like that. So um, I feel like as, as the religion itself should be able to be open to understanding what the t that t times are changing and not change their um, scriptures, not change anything of the sort, but change how they deliver it to their youths, yeah. how, to the, how they deliver it to their teenagers. Because trust me, it makes such a big difference. For me, I was in a, I was in a Pentecostal church, Protestant church rather, um, that really welcomed me. I didn't feel judged by how I dressed. I didn't feel, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that Sunday, I'd feel like I really need to work on myself. Yeah. I really need, I, whatever, whatever actions that I've done that week may, um, was bad, uh, made God feel bad. Yeah. Like it was more of like, I want to do better. I don't want to, I'm not doing it because the church told me to do it. I'm doing it because whatever they preached to me, made sense to my head yeah you know so yeah i really love what you just said it's institutionalized rather than personalized but then that brings in the next question should the church conform to the young people should the young people conform to the church there's no confirming to each other at all it's communication it's communication and it's just finding that middle ground yeah. of this is what the teenagers and the youth are into right now. What can we do as a church to bring them in? Because how we are doing it, it seems like it's not working. Yeah. How can we, we can get a few uh, people from the um, teenage uh, church or like the youth church to come and talk to us and give us ideas on how we can uh, make the message more understandable and more relatable to them. Yeah. So it's not conforming to anyone at all. Yeah. yeah. Davin, I see how frustrated you are because I'm trying to impose our way. <laughs> Brought up to her, which is a different generation, but but it's it's the truth. What do you think that is the role of the church? Because we've talked about parental guidance, and all this is related to what you're trying to achieve with the past series, yeah. Trying to set the standard, not to lecture anyone, but tell them essentially, as a society, this is how we need to live. But there are also guiding principles along the way that makes a society what it is. That's why I'm bringing in the issue of the church and the clergy, because we all need that pivotal point where you know that this is how we should be. So we are arguing, right? Mm -hmm. well, we, all, we always I argue. I know you love that. You and I, we <laughs> I always argue. <laughs> we are arguing yeah. that, that um, whatever that guiding principle is, right, that is, that is personal, that is your own. And uh, to be honest, I don't, I don't necessarily believe that it should be inflicted on others. So the argument for PA is find what is good for you, what is your thing, what is not your thing. Whether that is uh, believing whatever God, believing, following whatever church, whether it's a, a, a tree, a, the environment, the sun, the Allah, whoever. Yeah. What is good for you, what is not good for you. I don't believe that human beings should say X, Y, Z, these are the guiding principles. That's it. Follow them. It's an individual decision and quest. But there are certain choices that have to be related to the general society, right? But that's law. Yeah. That's law. But still, even emotionally, there's still things you can't certainly do. I mean, when you walked in here, what was the first thing you said? <laughs> 
You know, what is you, the you, first thing you, I had, said? you had to make sure you look decent, right? It was probably, yeah, it was probably something offensive. Yeah. I was like, what's up? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, of course. Yeah. But that's that's something for me, right? Yeah. So that's that's a personal thing. Actually, the first thing was, can I have some coffee? <laughs> but it's looking, not. okay, so we'll take that as an example. Can yeah. I can I see myself? So it yes. was like, can I see that I am decent? Yes. Can I see that I'm not looking horrendous? Can I see that I'm presented in a way that is in line to how I want to be presented? So that is my guiding principle. So you're saying that also is relative? And of Stephanie's style and yours is completely different. Of course, absolutely. And, and uh, in no way am I like, Stephanie, wear this X, Y, Z. Citizen is not saying, wear this, do this, say this. You very, very um, kindly came in and said, show us your views. Communicate. Okay. <laughs> Whether you're a boy child, girl child, old, young, white, black, communicate. Yeah. Okay. And watch Pa. <laughs> Every Sunday, you say. Okay. <laughs> this is, uh, you call yourself graphics 929. Conversing is one way, even disciplinary action by beating gently is another good way too. Please don't call it physical harm, call it disciplinary action. Okay. Look at this as an oxymoron. Are we ready? <laughs> beating gently. gently. Yeah. That is an oxymoron. They cannot interact. Beating gently. This is beating gently. Come here. This is bent, gently beating. Yeah. The, but it that's called be. stroking. I think that's, yeah, that's, like, that, that's, that's like no. Stroking. You can't <laughs> no. be gently. You're Sorry. still inflicting pain on, on someone. And that's actually conditioning in psychology. That's behavioral conditioning. Yeah. It's, 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 in, it's in, um, instilling fear into the person. And they're trauma. not, it, yeah, it's trauma, basically. You're not able to communicate with this person. They will grow up fearing you instead of like respecting you for the role you play in their life. It's more of like, I fear you because you're my mom and you can beat me if I do something wrong. But that's not how it's supposed to be at all. Like for me, I started communicating with my parents, I think when I was in my last day in high school. And that's when we actually started understanding each other better. I told them, even right now with my work, the days I come home late, the days I wake up, I leave early. So at that time, like back, if I hadn't talked to them, it would be more of like, I want you in the house by 7 p.m. I don't care if you're going to tell them um, that, that you have to leave or whatever, whatever excuse you come, I want you home by 7 p.m. I'm not doing anything wrong. That communication of just telling them, it's my work, this is how it works, I'm making money, I'm trying to also build a name for myself. This is, these are the conditions that I have to work under, yeah. you know? So it's, it's more of communication than in, inflicting pain and fear into someone just so that can, they can conform to your rule and dictatorship. Mm -hmm. But look at, look at this parallel, right? If you're yeah. talking about parents and children, yeah. look at the parallel between state and citizens. You know, I mean, what do you want? You want you want to be beaten gently by your by your government, by your politicians, by your state. By the police, no, police, don't. They're, they're not gentle. Look <laughs> yeah, at the problem. Exactly. Look at the problem. Look at where we're at. Right? We're inflicting so pain. Saying, exactly, pain and trauma. So what we're saying is, if we if we get the parent child relationship right, in theory, you should be able to take that out of your household and get the state citizen relationship right. Someone I had speaking online was saying that we baby our generation too much and that also just shows years later. Because you see, the thing is, it's always baba, mama, trying to ensure you're gentle with them. But it's a tough world, Davina. It is a tough world. If you're not built for it, things will not work your way. And that's the reason why now some people are saying it's a microwave generation. Because when they were growing up, there was these options, okay? Do you want this? No, I don't want that. Okay, you can get this. In the real world, there's no such thing. It's right. a man eat man society out there. So how do you toughen up people to know that it's not going to be a gentle ride? So, you have to grow some thick skin. So my response to that would be, that person from that generation talking about this generation being too, raised too softly, let's look at the state that we're in globally, as a country, as an economy, as a people, the generation above us haven't done a great job. So, a lot, a lot of people are very, um, they've gone through so much trauma, they're really trying to get out of it in their adulthood. And it's because of the mentality that the older generation had. For me, I feel like even the, the older way of discipline made more harm than good, to, did more harm than good to me. So, I understand that statement for my crib generation and having a self generation, but I would not put it like that. It's just selective. There's some who've been literally, 
the parents would be like, okay, I don't want to beat you, but they don't understand that discipline also has to be effective, yeah. affected, you know? It's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's just the misunderstanding that's there of how to raise your child in this generation because you can't go fully soft on them because they will take advantage. Trust me, they will yeah. take advantage. But you, can, you can't also let them just do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. But I Davina think, is the soft kind. No, no, no. You know, the, <laughs> the thing is, I'm you know I'm not. I'm the thing is, is that if we look around, right? Yeah. If we look around and everything was amazing, then we'd be like, fantastic, things are working. Let's all just have, have a cup of tea and relax. Yeah. But we're not. We're seeking alternatives. Because why? Because we're not in this perfect um, utopia. And that, so now when, you, when things aren't working, you have to look for options. And that's what's happening in terms of parenting. Okay. Let's see, Governor 254 is on a roll this morning. He <laughs> says, all too know. often our personality is nothing more than psychological clothing that we wear to hide our true self from the world. I don't agree with that no. at you all. Disagree? Yes, because if he took a personality test, he'd know the type of person he is. He'd know, and he'd find it more accurate. It's not that I'm saying I am extroverted and that's just who I am. So if I do anything bad, it's just because I'm an, uh, I'm an extrovert. No, take, take um, responsibility for your actions. That's who you are. Don't try use, don't try switch the narrative and make it seem like um, extrovertedness is, um, is, is just who you are and yeah, you have to deal with it. It's not. If you've done something wrong, don't put it on extroversion. Just say it's you <laughs> who did it, you know? So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're also um, we're also not 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 championing um, over over intellectualizing or just putting putting uh, titles on things. We're also just saying, be true to yourself. Know what is you, what is not you. And as long as you're not hurting, yeah, gently slapping, <laughs> not hurting anyone else or anything else, what is the problem? Okay. Because there's still a, a conversation around that. He calls himself Daoud Mohammed. Says, I like, your, I like your line of questioning. So what do you do when your kid has done something very bad, a bad mistake? Do you soften up or what are the options? Depends what it is. Yeah. I think um, it depends what it is. I think it's, it's conversing, it's, it's discussing, it's communicating, it's finding the root yeah. of the problem and then looking at ramifications of that child's actions. Because okay. at the end of the day, they're still your child. You're not going to throw them out and be like, you're not my child now because you've made a mistake. It's just now finding a solution from then. Just yeah. talking to them and be like, Have, do you understand that you've done something wrong? And what do you think is, is the best punishment for you? Do you think that I should, I'm valid enough to punish you right now? So whatever punishment you feel would be best, not beating though, whatever punishment you feel would be best for them to understand the repercussions of the mistake they've made yeah. would be, I don't know, like it's just, it's just communication basically. Just know how to speak to your child. Because at the end of the day, you can't do anything. That's your child. That's your child. Whatever they do is a reflection of who you are as well. Okay. So make it a point of representing um, your family as a whole, not just as individuals. Okay. Yeah. As we wind up on this, Davina, and time flies really fast, is a reminder of when people can catch the show and how would you describe the past series in just two or three words? How, what is it? How would you describe it? Ah, pa is a exploration. Pa is an exploration of growing up and growing into yourself. You can watch it every Sunday at 6 p.m. on Citizen. All right. Steph? Um, pa is very educative, very fun, and in the creative aspect, very... Ha, it was such an amazing time shooting it. So, yeah, yeah catch it on Citizen TV, 6 p.m. every Sunday. Yeah, and finally, a young girl who's watching you this morning. What do you want her to hear? Don't be too hard on yourself. Um, you make, everyone makes mistakes. No one is perfect. And don't always believe whatever you see on social media. Someone might be going through a mental breakdown, but they'll still post that they're in Dubai or they're living a lavish lifestyle. So just be true to who you are, basically. Yeah. Davina? I'm taking hers. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're the sky granny. You have to talk to the girls. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it's, it, it will get better ultimately. Um, there will be bad days, but look for the good.
Brilliant. All right. Thank you so much for making time this morning. Davina Leonard, scriptwriter, Power Series, and Stephanie Mushiri, lead actress, Power Series as well. That's where we leave it for now. My name is Trevor Mbija. It's always a pleasure having you with us here. Like we always say, this too shall pass. All right. Whatever it is you're going through, this too shall pass. All right. Bye for now.